In the near future, due to rapid climate change causing a rise in sea levels, humanity moves to space and builds shelters between the Earth and the Moon's orbital planes. Decades later, shelters 8, 12, and 13 form the Adrian Republic and launch attacks on the other shelters, starting a war with the Allied force. As a result, the remaining humans on Earth are forced to produce weapons and parts for the robots used in the conflict. Captain Yungi, the Army's most skilled soldier, awakes in an abandoned town after an explosion. She quickly defends herself from robots by making precise shots and using her weapon's hook in innovative ways. While the humanoid robots are easy for her to defeat, she faces a challenge when a new, sturdier four-legged model appears, making it difficult for her to fight alone. Captain Yungi selects strategic hiding places and ambushes the robot with a shot that ignites it. However, the robot is equipped with extinguishers and quickly recovers. Utilizing her hook, Yungi gathers a pile of metal beams and drops them onto the robot as it approaches, successfully trapping it. Next, she takes cover behind a car to make her final shot, but gets distracted by a small doll hanging from the car's rearview mirror. This momentary distraction allows the robot to fire first, causing Captain Yungi to stumble back. Upon inspecting her broken hand, she realizes she is an android and was previously unaware of her artificial nature. An alarm sounds and the town vanishes. It becomes clear that this version of Yungi is not the real one, who died in battle several years prior. Scientists are now using a copy of her brain to develop the ideal soldier android, which can be duplicated and sent to war. However, the project has faced setbacks, as during simulations recreating Young Yi's final battle, she consistently loses at the same point, and the reason for this remains unknown. The team leader is Si Hyun, who is the daughter of Young Yi. She is forced to repeatedly witness her mother's death in the simulations. The director of the project, Sang Hoon, decides to hold a special presentation for the army's higher-ups to showcase their android. Referred to as Young Yi, the presentation features fine dining and a summary of the war's history, but the generals are uninterested and demand that they skip over what they already know. The video describes the process of mapping Young Yi's neural cortex and converting the data to create the most advanced combat command AI. Si Hyung then showcases how the simulations have recorded behavioral patterns. However, the soldiers observe that the android has yet to escape the simulation, and that if Young Yi had not lost that battle, they would have already won the war. The government will not fund the project until the team solves Young Yi's final error. After the presentation, Si Hyun and Sang Hoon hold a private meeting. Sang Hoon reassures Si Hyun that he has her full support and that the chairman has high expectations for her. Sang Hoon has been working for the chairman for 10 years and recognizes that Si Hyun was taken in as a young girl who lost her mother. He values having a positive working relationship with her. Afterwards, Si Hyun collaborates with new team member Yi Kyung to examine the latest issue. The remnants of Young Yi are reactivated, but as the brain still believes it is human, the fake Young Yi is shocked and distressed upon realizing she is a robot, causing intense pain. Si Hyun quickly disables the pain sensors, causing Young Yi to become angry and demanding answers. The damaged brain copy is deemed unusable, so Si Hyun orders its destruction. After this, the team ends their workday. Yi Kyung takes the opportunity to express his excitement at working there, stating he has always admired Young Yi as a hero. Si Hyun reveals that Young Yi never aspired to be a hero but instead joined the war as a mercenary to pay for her daughter's medical treatments. As a child, Si Hyun was diagnosed with a lung tumor, causing Young Yi to cry every time she left for battle. Tragically, Young Yi passed away on the day of Si Hyun's surgery. Si Hyun sometimes thinks about whether her mother regrets the sacrifice she made for her and if she resents her for it. Yi Kyung suggests that she could simply ask the android, who possesses the memories of the real Young Yi although Si Hyung says she'll think about it, she appears to be afraid to do so. Later, she takes a local train and observes a mother playing with her child. The sight of the mother and child on the train reminds Si Hyung of her last encounter with her own mother. At that time, she was preparing for surgery and her mother, Young Yi, came by to offer good wishes before departing for battle. Young Yi had pledged to return and embrace Si Hyung tightly, kissing her cheek for luck. Upon reaching her destination, Si Hyung goes to take her annual ethics exam, which is mandatory for everyone to demonstrate that they are not an android. The test covers questions about emotions and ethics. Later, she visits her doctor, who sadly informs her that the tumor in her lungs has returned and she has only three months left to live. This news means that the surgery she underwent as a child and her mother's sacrifice were ultimately for nothing. The doctor suggests that the best option would be to immediately transfer her brain into a prosthetic body through a process known as brain copying. However, current laws only protect individuals who undergo type of brain copying, which is extremely costly. There is also a cheaper alternative known as type B brain copying, but this option carries the disadvantage of losing certain rights such as the right to marry, freedom of movement, and adoption. The government mandates that individuals who undergo brain copying must comply with giving them access to their brain data. The alternative option, type C brain copying, does not recognize the person as a human being. 
This option involves surrendering ownership of the brain data to certified companies, leading to the creation of thousands of clones. The person who chooses this option will no longer be considered an individual, but the prosthetic body will be provided at no cost. Type C is the option Young Yi selected to pay for Si Hyung's surgery. After leaving the doctor, who is also an android, Si Hyung promises to consider her options and tells the doctor to recharge. As she exits the building, she recalls the day when the company's executives came to her home and asked her grandmother to sign an agreement giving them permission to use Young Yi's brain for the androids. In exchange, they would finance Si Hyung's upbringing and gave her a Young Yi action figure as a gift, promising her mother's legacy as a hero. Despite this, Si Hyung still has doubts about the decision. She concludes her day by visiting her mother's comatose body, preserved in a chamber to prevent brain decay. The following day, Si Hyung and her team prepare to run a new simulation by creating a duplicate of the brain. However, before they start, Sang Hoon wants to try a different approach and instructs the team to shoot the android in the leg. Upon awakening in the simulation, Young Yi experiences intense pain from the leg injury, causing Si Hyung distress as she watches her mother suffer. Despite the pain, Young Yi tries to remain combatant but her determination begins to falter. However, just as the opponent is about to defeat her, a new part of her brain becomes activated, allowing her to rise and keep fighting. She ultimately triumphs over the robot using only her fists, only to be shot by another adversary. Although they have lost the new brain, Sang Hoon is thrilled by this development and eager to present it to the superiors. The following day, the entire team departs from the lab and journeys to the headquarters, but the chairman is unavailable. They are instead greeted by the new head of product development, who continually giggles at Sang Hoon and does not take him seriously. Sang Hoon is puzzled by the creation of a product development department, as the company only produces weapons and has never had such a department. He fears that the weapons development may be reduced, but his fears are ignored and the team is dismissed without any answers. During the return trip to the lab, Sang Hoon continues to criticize the new employee and vows to maintain the chairman's vision. A few days later, as the team assesses new components for their next android trial, they receive news that the chairman has arrived to see them. On their way to the meeting, Sang Hoon inquires if Si Hyung has taken her ethics examination, emphasizing the importance of ensuring she is mentally stable while handling the experiment involving her own mother. As soon as they enter the office, Sang Hoon becomes paralyzed, revealing that he is actually an android created by the chairman through replicating his own brain, of which Sang Hoon is unaware. The chairman has arrived to deliver significant news. The Allied Force and Adrian Republic are signing a treaty, signaling the end of the war and the discontinuation of weapons production. Although the research on Young Yi is not viewed as meaningless by him, as it has provided valuable insights into creating advanced AI, this newfound knowledge can now be applied to create housekeeping and service worker androids. The chairman reveals that his original intention was to have his mind transferred into Sang Hoon for immortality, but ultimately chose to copy it instead as he lacked the courage to reside in a machine that would always seem artificial. Si Hyung is undeterred by the artificiality and wants to continue her mother's work, but the chairman denies her request. Later, the team returns to their tasks to ensure the project is completed before altering their objectives. Young Yi continuously malfunctions at the same point and Sang Hoon is frustrated as they are unable to activate the new brain area to isolate the issue. Sang Hoon decides it's time to try drastic measures. He instructs the team to activate the android and amputate her arm, causing Si Hyung to witness the android's brain registering intense pain. Despite this, the new brain area remains inactive. In desperation, Sang Hoon attempts to shoot the android's legs, mimicking the previous injury. Si Hyung ultimately shuts down the system to end Young Yi's suffering, inciting a furious Sang Hoon to brandish his weapon at her. Seo Yan remains unfazed by the threat. Before the situation escalates, an employee arrives to inform Sang Hoon that the chairman wants to see him, and he leaves without a word. Si Hyung expresses her gratitude to the team for their efforts. The project is being shut down, but she instructs them to gather all the data and send it to her. Later, despite the discomfort in her lungs, Si Hyung focuses on reviewing the data and is shocked to find that someone has secretly exported her mother's brain one final time without her knowledge. Si Hyung decides to investigate and as she walks past Yi Kyung's room, she hears suspicious noises and decides to enter. She is disturbed by what she sees, Yi Kyung engaging in inappropriate behavior with a new android, which has been programmed for sexual activities, but still has Young Yi's face. Enraged, Si Hyung covers the android with a blanket and confronts Yi Kyung, shoving him against the shelves and berating him for being a pervert. However, Yi Kyung defends himself by saying he was just following orders. He reveals that they are creating household AIs, including intimate companions, and since Young Yi was so popular, people were willing to pay a large sum to have her as their girlfriend. Young Yi's personality type, C, indicates that she can be used by anyone. 
Overwhelmed by the realization, Si Hyung leaves the room tearfully, feeling that she should have anticipated this outcome, especially since they had given her an action figure of her deceased mother. However, she quickly returns to the lab to spend time with the android before it is taken away. Sang Hoon is already there, feeling depressed as he believes that he has lost the trust of the chairman and this is why their project has been cancelled. Ignoring Sang Hoon, Si Hyung enters the android chamber and activates the android by turning off its pain sensors. When she has Young-E's attention, she informs her that they have saved her from the enemy, and that she is badly injured. Si Hyung promises to help her pass away peacefully. Just as she is about to deactivate the android, the brain area that they had been searching for suddenly lights up again. As young -E inquires about the outcome of her daughter's surgery, Si Hyung tears up upon realizing that the activity in this part of her brain was a result of young -E's fear of passing away without knowing if her daughter survived. She then informs young -E that the surgery was successful, so she can rest peacefully. young -E is grateful to learn of the successful surgery and confesses to feeling guilty. She had lost the small doll that her daughter gave her before heading into the surgery, which was meant to bring her good luck. This is why she constantly loses at the same spot and is tormented by guilt. She is taken aback when she sees a similar doll in the car. Unable to continue hearing this, Si Hyung shuts off Young-E and breaks down, releasing her own feelings of guilt through screams. After this outpouring, she realizes there is one final thing she can do. The following day, she requests to run a final simulation before shutting down the system. She informs her team that she will prepare the simulation alone, and once they have left, Si Hyung removes the unknown portion of Young-E's brain. Next, she leans in and whispers to Young-E, detailing the unpleasant consequences that will occur after the final simulation if they do not take action. During the final simulation, Young-E follows her standard battle strategies and perishes at the same place she always does. Yi Kaeng notices unusual readings, suggesting a weaker response from the brain. But Sang Hoon is indifferent as the project has concluded regardless. The other workers remove the android, and Sang Hoon starts heading to his room. Suddenly, he realizes that he also saw something odd and rushes back to the laboratory. He requests the replay of the simulation in slow motion, which reveals that Young-E was not actually shot. Instead, she feigned being hit and fell in her usual spot. Sang Hoon quickly triggers the alarm, causing Young Yi to respond by knocking out the workers who were removing her. As the team prepares for emergency procedures, Si Hyung rushes back to the lab and erases all the original project data. Meanwhile, Young Yi searches for an escape route and discovers a room filled with numerous robots that resemble her. Before Young Yi has a chance to process the situation, Sang Hoon's security robots locate her and initiate a fierce battle. Despite this, young -E, a renowned fighter, quickly defeats the robots. During the fight, a robot shoves her towards a maintenance machine, but she utilizes this to her advantage and uses the machine against the attacking robot. Suddenly, one of the robots takes advantage of her weakness and kicks her from behind, pushing her against the wall with the intention to kill her. Si Hyung arrives and deactivates the robot just before it's too late. She tells young -E they are in this together, and young -E trusts her due to hearing her voice in her dreams. Soon after, more security robots appear and take Si Hyung away, while shooting at young -E. Upon inspection of the body, they find it empty. Reviewing the security footage reveals that Si Hyung removed the brain copy from the body, and transferred it to a security android, allowing her to escape undetected by leaving the body with her mother's appearance. Si Hyung takes Young-E onto the train, only to find out it is not as abandoned as they believed. Sang Hoon is there to greet them. As the train departs, he accuses Si Hyung of ingratitude towards the chairman's actions and instructs Young-E to distance herself from her. The revelation that Si Hyung is her daughter stuns Young-E, but Si Hyung interrupts to explain that she erased all her data from her memory to have a new beginning without any more sacrifices. In retaliation for destroying the project, Sang Hoon shoots Si Hyung in the shoulder, leading Young Yi to attack and shoot him with his own weapon. Sang Hoon quickly regains his footing and continues the fight, but is momentarily stunned upon seeing his reflection in the window. The shot has exposed his identity as an android. Si Hyung refers to him as the chairman's toy, driving Sang Hoon into a frenzy. With his android abilities activated, he assaults Young Yi, leading to a chaotic fight that sends both of them tumbling throughout the train cabin and causes the train to shake on its tracks. After exchanging several blows, Sang Hoon manages to push Young Yi out of a window, but she intentionally releases herself to circle around the train and re-enter through another window. At that moment, additional security robots arrive on a neighboring train and connect the two carriages together. Young Yi is faced with attackers who enter through the windows, but easily defeats them with precise strikes. During the distraction, Sang Hoon tries to attack Young Yi with a hook, but when Si Hyung sees her mother in danger, she attempts to intervene. However, the robot pushes Si Hyung aside. Observing her daughter's peril, Young Yi becomes more combative and obliterates the remaining robots. She also forcibly removes Sang Hoon from the train, but he clings to the hook and re enters. The two resume fighting as the train reaches the city, and the excessive vibrations from two coupled carriages cause the tracks to collapse. Si Hyung picks up a dropped weapon and fires a hook for Young Yi to grab, assisting her mother to return to the first carriage safely. 
They leave the second carriage to fall with Sang Hoon inside. The train finally grinds to a halt in a mountainous region. Young Yi wishes to attend to Si Hyung's gunshot wound, but they hear the police approaching and Si Hyung states that she doesn't have much time remaining. Si Hyung urges Young Yi to flee and begin a new life where she can prioritize her own well being. After some reluctance, Young Yi agrees to the plan. Before leaving, she embraces Si Hyung and performs a lucky cheek rub as she did when Si Hyung was a child, as a farewell. As Young Yi departs the train, Si Hyung offers her good wishes and passes away, content in having achieved closure. Young Yi flees into the mountains, away from any potential captors, to enjoy her eternal freedom. Watch next and see how a young girl named Sophie is abducted by a giant from an orphanage and taken into the giant country. Please subscribe and turn on notifications to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.